so that you can see visually what I'm describing. I'm going to use a long tail. Her vertebra is not so long, okay? But so that visually you can see what I'm describing. Let's say the injury is here. And this is the length of her vertebra. Okay. Now, in any posture that you do to help, if the injury is because of a compression at this vertebra, then your attempt from the top of the vertebra is to move towards the top and from the bottom of the vertebra to move towards the pelvic floor, which is what will give you the stretch. That it applies when the injury is due to a compression, which is most, most often the case. But there are injuries that happen because of overstretch, in which case your attempt should be to move from the bottom of the vertebra to the top rather than from the top of the vertebra. And from the top of the vertebra, you want to move down. Get the idea? That's a general approach. That's kind of the basic thing that you will want to know. Either you decide and work with that, meaning you decide whether it's a compression or an overstretch, or you can get a doctor to tell you. What I would suggest is you work with, in, 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 uh, you work with some reasonable assumption as to what has happened. So let's say you assume that it has happened because of a compression and you work with it. If it doesn't help, don't panic. But if it makes it worse, then you know your assumption is wrong. And you change that assumption. If you already know the correct thing and working with it, you find it does not help, then it requires more working with it, staying longer in the poses that help. If you don't have any problem at all, it's very interesting to do this from every single vertebra, to do, do that more effectively. Not only you need some understanding of it, but also you want to use your prana, not your breath. You use the breath to control the prana. Don't think of controlling the breath to do this. Think of what you, how you are using the breath to control the pranic movement. So we want to move this from the top of the vertebra. You want to move up towards the collarbone. Some of that movement is musculoskeletal movement. But then when that musculoskeletal movement stops, you want to continue further by pranic movement, which is where you start using your breath. Don't try to move on inhalation. Inhale, do nothing more. Every time you exhale, attempt to go a little further. Musculoskeletal movement is where the initial movement in the body happens. But then as you hold the pose, pranic movement continues. Think of pranic movement as the kind of movement that happened in your body as the body grew over several years. That is not an immediate or a sudden movement. But over a long period, it moves. It is breath after breath after breath helps. Even though breath itself is not a prana, the pranic movement is helped by the breath. So once again, in moving down, don't do it on inhalation. Inhale, do nothing more. Hold whatever you have created. Every time you exhale from the bottom of that vertebra, let the energy move down towards the pelvic floor. And to make sure that the pranic movement is working somewhat correctly. See that the brain responds correctly 
Every time you inhale, brain should comfortably feel sense of releasing to its own center. Every time you exhale, the brain moves out. Both movements of the brain, in and out, are relaxing movements. That approach in yogic sense would be called asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana. It is moved between pratyahara and dharana. And it can lead all the way to meditation. If while doing this, you drop into a meditative state, it can continue. That is one approach. I'll share with you another approach, slightly different. Rather than pick a particular vertebra, you can pick a point of pain. There is a certain pain in my back, let's say. I don't know which word you write is related to, but I know the location of the pain. So I begin by saying, okay, I'll be very careful with the language. You have not located the pain. Your mind has located it. So the rest of the conversation is with your mind, like it is another person I'm talking to. Once the pain is located by the mind, you talk to the mind and say, all right, mind, you told me there is this pain. If you did not tell me that, I did not know it. Since the mind gave me this information that there is a pain here, I tell the mind, all right, fair enough. You've given me some information. Now tell me how big it is. In the beginning, the mind will refuse to say how big it is. But you have to insist where the mind slowly will begin to say, okay, it is this big. It will give you a boundary around that location of the pain. Then you say, all right, next step. In the boundary of the brain, I take my pranic energy by using the breath. Inhale into that boundary. You know the breath doesn't go there. But by inhalation, you are taking the pranic energy to that area. On exhalation, wash away at the periphery the circumference of that, of that block. It, the image I have in my mind is that if it's a, it's a mount of sand and the water is washing around the base of the sand, it will slowly destroy the mount. Water by itself is not very powerful, but it can demolish biggest rock by repeatedly flowing around the rock. just understand how powerful that water is. It creates a grand canyon, okay? not an ordinary force. By doing what? By slowly, over a long period, doing it. In some homes where there is a, you know, when the rain falls, it, it falls on a pavement. Let's say on, on the pavement where it falls, there is, you have a concrete slab. You put a new concrete slab, rain comes, and after the rain, you look at it, and nothing has happened to the concrete slab. But you leave the slab there, year after year after year, as that water drops, drop by drop by drop, it will destroy the hardest concrete pavement. So the force of the water is rather subtle, but it is consistent. It is a consistency that is compared to meditation. If you practice meditation, a few attempts of meditation will not really do too much. You might even think meditation is not effective. But you continue that meditation. 
every day regularly. It will destroy the heart rate of the rock it is facing. So that consistency of approach is what is required. With that consistency of approach, what you will find is, sometimes people find this rather immediately, but whatever the big blob of the pain was begins to demolish, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And even the smallest point that is left will not be in one position. As soon as the mind says, it is here exactly, it will change, it will move somewhere else. And when you say, yes, it is here, it will move back to somewhere else. It keeps shifting. That shift indicates that the actual point of pain is very, very, very small. Most of it is exaggerated by your mind. This is, yogically speaking, this is at least one reason why when you fall asleep, the pain disappears. Mind is no longer telling you there is pain. The memory also is not working. 